This is the Italian Real Estate Podcast, here to help you with the ins and outs and basics of Italian real estate presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Hello there and welcome to another edition of the Italian Real Estate Podcast presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Of course, we are back at it again with Italian attorney Marco Permonian. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I am doing great, thank you. And of course, I'm Rafael Di Furia and today, We wanted to talk a little bit about canceling a rental contract in Italy in a number of episodes. We've lightly referred to this topic, but today we wanted to devote an episode specifically to this idea. And so Marco, maybe before we get into how to cancel a contract in Italy, uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about the types of rental contracts that you can find in the nation? In Italy, there are two types of long-term rental agreements. The first one is valid for four years and it can be renewed for another four years and it's called four plus four contract. The second one is a rental agreement that is valid for three years and then it can be renewed for another two years. Now, people might be wondering why it's a combination of two numbers. And before I explain that, I should probably explain that in Italy, the landlord cannot terminate the agreement. So it's only the tenant that can terminate the agreement before its natural expiration. The landlord cannot terminate the agreement before its natural expiration, meaning that if the landlord doesn't want the tenant anymore, they need to wait for the first term, uh, meaning the four years in the first contract or the three years in the second contract. And only in that occasion, they can send formal notice to the tenant that they don't want them to be their tenant anymore. Otherwise, if nobody says anything, the contract will be automatically renewed for another four years or two years, respectively. Now, on the other hand, the tenant at any point has the ability to terminate the contract. So even before its natural expiration, the tenant can send a letter of formal notice to the landlord saying that they don't want to be in that apartment or property anymore. Very interesting, Marco. And of course, uh, when talking about the cancellation of a rental contract, of course, uh, one of the biggest things that you have to think about is how long ahead of time that you need to be able to give notice. Of course, in some parts of the world, one month is more than enough, but how long is the time frame that you would normally need to give notice in Italy? Like I said before, the tenant is free to give notice to the landlord even before the natural expiration of the agreement however like you just said there is a specific time frame to be respected so you can't give notice and move out the next day or actually you can but you're responsible for paying the rent for a number of months and that number is normally six so you have to give notice six months before you move out or you are responsible for paying the rent for those six months even if you move out immediately so you're free to move out of course whenever you want but uh, if you give notice, then you can only terminate the agreement and, and stop being responsible for paying the rent six months after. Now, this term, six months, is negotiable. So the law does indicate a six-month term for uh, giving notice, but the parties are free to negotiate that term. Now, it's unlikely, especially in the current market, to be able to negotiate those six months. But in some cases, it's possible Uh, to get it down to four months or even three months. But like I said, generally speaking, landlords, especially in this moment, uh, they prefer to have a six months notice in the agreement. Thank you, Marco. And so if somebody does decide that they want to cancel their contract before the natural expiration of the contract itself, are there any penalties that the individual might have to consider? That's a common misconception a lot of my clients they uh, were under the impression that you know they were entering into a four years contract or a three years contract again renewable for another two years or four years respectively but then they were obligated to pay the rent for those four years and or if they gave notice that there was a penalty but actually giving notice is a natural way to terminate your agreement which is only allowed uh, for the tenant before the natural expiration of the agreement itself. So there is no penalty whatsoever. The only condition that needs to be respected is that you give notice and the notice needs to be given six months before you move out or you need to be 
able to continue paying the rent for those six months, even if you want to move out sooner. So you need to legally inform the landlord of your departure six months before, or you need to pay the rent if you want to move out sooner. Now, with that being said, meaning there are no penalties, there is though a cancellation fee, which is an administrative fee. So whenever you enter into a contract, you need to register the contract with the revenue agency in Italy. And those registration fees, uh, which are less than 100 euros, generally speaking, are generally to be divided between the tenant and the landlord. That's common practice. Now, there are also cancellation fees, meaning administrative fees that the landlord or the tenant need to pay to cancel the agreement. And those fees are to be paid to the revenue agency in Italy. And generally speaking, they're split between the tenant and the landlord. So of course, if you're wanting to cancel a contract and give notice of termination, then you'll need to be able to notify the owner of the property. So in Italy, I know there are certain specific ways that you have to communicate things or that you have to make sure you go about things. And I would assume that in this case, that would also be the same case. How would that look in the situation where someone wants to end their contract early? Unlike other countries where notice can be given in very simple ways, like sending an email, uh, as long as you know it's certain that you want to cancel, in Italy, that cannot happen, meaning that you can only cancel the agreement through one of the ways that the law allows you to use, meaning either a letter, registered letter, sent to the address of the landlord indicated on the agreement itself with return receipt. So you need to be able to receive a receipt with the landlord's signature uh, where he basically or she uh, confirms that they got the letter or Nowadays, a more common way to send a cancellation notice is to use a certified email. So if the landlord has a certified email, also known as PEC in Italy, then you can send a PEC certified email, which basically has the same legal validity of a registered mail. Very interesting. And so within this notification, do you have to cite specific reasons or are there reasons that are good enough or reasons that are not good enough uh, to be able to cancel the contract? Or do you just have to simply say that you're no longer interested in continuing to live in that apartment? Exactly. You simply have to mention that you're no longer interested in keeping the apartment or property and you do not have to state any reasons. And then what about things like, say, a deposit? Because, of course, almost every apartment, I've never heard of an apartment where a deposit wouldn't be required. Uh, how would that be handled at the end of this agreement? Yes, when you move into an apartment or property in Italy, you do have to pay a security deposit. Generally speaking, that's equal to three months of rent plus the first rent. So when you move into an apartment, you basically have to pay the equivalent of four uh, rents. And when you move out, you will receive the security deposit back now a lot of people are under the impression that they will receive the security deposit as soon as they send notice or when the agreement is terminated however the landlord has the legal right to retain the security deposits for a number of days and generally speaking that's 30 more days after the person has moved out so they can check the property and see if damages were made to the property and after those 30 days, they have the ability to send back the whole amount or retain a portion of the amount for damages caused to the property. Well, Marco, this has been a very informative episode, as usual, of the Italian real estate podcast. But of course, if anybody is looking to move to Italy or have any help with their real estate process, rental or purchase, how can they get in contact with you and your team? People can contact us through our website, italianrealestatelawyers.com, or give us a call. Our number is on the website. Well, absolutely fantastic. And of course, if you're interested in more information about moving to Italy, purchasing property in Italy, where to purchase that property, or even rent, be sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel with the notification bell turned on, and that you're also subscribed to the audio-only version of this podcast. But also, if you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, that does mean that you are automatically subscribed to the Italian Citizenship Podcast, another project that Marco and I collaborate on, where we talk about some of the specific details about legally making Italy your home. And also, if you're interested in more discussions about living 
life abroad as a dual citizen expat, be sure to come over to my YouTube channel and audio only podcast. You can search for my name on youtube.com slash Rafaeldiforia, or you can search for Not Your Average Globetrotter on YouTube or your favorite podcasting player of choice. But of course, we have been here again with Italian attorney Marco Permunian from ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com, and I am Rafael Di Furia, and we will see you all next time. Stay safe and healthy. Thank Later. you. Later.